Okay, welcome back everyone. So, today we're going to be talking a bit about uber pushes, dry fights, and mid fights. And what those are, um, and just talking a little, a little bit about them. So, starting off, uber pushes kind of just are what they sound like. It's a push where you're using your uber. So this is going to be a strategy you're mostly going to want to be going for when you have uber add. Um, and what makes an uber good or not? <clears throat> so as a rule of thumb, if you can kill at least two people with the uber, especially if one of those people is a demo or a medic, um, then it's probably a good enough uber to go for. Um, with two picks, that gives you, even if it's less important players, like just their, like, a soldier and a scout, for instance, that still gives you enough time and enough breathing room to... Uh, to at least have some type of cushion. <clears throat> so let's say you're Ubering into second and you just want to bomb through choke, you get your two picks, so it's like a good Uber. Uh, you are disad now because their med lived and so now he has Uber add. But uh, with those two picks, that can even give you enough time to get that second point and potentially even pressure forward a bit. See if you can't get a force while they're down those players. Um, and then of course like make sure that you're playing appropriately passively for when they have those players they're ready to take an uber things like that <laughs> but as a rule of thumb if you can get two people with the uber then um, it's generally a good enough uber to go for um, one thing to note there is those two picks that's like when all the dust settles because if you're losing your own players in the meantime or um, post uber then that's gonna weigh against against how good the uber was and the, the position you're in um, one big thing to note is like post uber positioning where you know let's say you take an uber through lower it you bomb through like they're they're positioned by one they run out one if you chase them all the way in here like towards their spawn let's say you like finally get the med here but like you're all dead also because you just your uber is over you're not invincible and you're just like stuck in so keep in mind what your post uber positioning is because it's when like everything settles that uh you really can make that uh that kind of uh prescription about it <clears throat> so a lot of players will be caught to just blind Ubers. Um, I would say it's probably worth at least spotting a little bit. Because blind Ubers just sort of rely on a, a more intuitive feel of the pace of the game and things like that. That being said though, blind Ubers can still totally work at, uh, especially at lower divisions. Because a lot of players will just be caught to it completely. Um, either they didn't know that it was disad, or they didn't see you guys anywhere and only wanted to back up when they saw you guys or something. Um, just using when you know it's ad and getting aggressive with it can be very productive. Um, but let's say you've been taking Ubers in to points and you haven't really been catching picks, hasn't been super fruitful. Um, what can you do differently? <clears throat> that is when the concept of a dry fight comes in. And a dry fight is just any fight whatsoever where there are no Ubers that get used. So um, dry fights and dry pushes, they don't specify whether it's add or disad or what teams even have Uber. It's just any fight or push where there's no Ubers involved. So drying into points um can be very effective when you have add against teams that either you've conditioned into playing passively when you have add 
or <coughs> against teams that just respect it outright and play passive regardless. Um, and the benefit to drying is since you're not going to be able to get much utility out of just using an uber because they're already so passive you you abuse the fact that they're playing passively to take positioning that they're no longer close enough to deny and then just take the point for free um so so yeah pretty much uh if they play close then just feel free to use uber on them kill them all be happy with that if you've conditioned them into playing passively or they they play passively to respect the uber ad um then you can consider just drying into points and getting them for free and keep in mind too if you're fast enough drying in um and the uber ad was like significant enough you can dry into a point and still have ad to keep going with <coughs> so uh just something to keep in mind there. Um, what else? Next, we're going to talk about mid fights. Oh, and actually, we're going to talk about sacks today as well, finally. So, mid fights. Um, mid fights are a unique kind of fight because um, they happen on like even terms. Usually. This is not the case. Um, and what do I mean by this? It means that all six players are showing up to mid at roughly the same time, depending on how good their rollouts are, at roughly the same health, depending on how good their rollouts are, and with the same positioning, right? And then it's just a fight from there. In pretty much no other circumstance is this the case, because like for like a fight into two, right? Um, generally speaking this is not a fight that will even be engaged unless the attacking team has an advantage right um so there's very few if any other fights um in the game that start out on like completely even terms like a mid fight does but anyway what's a good mid fight strategy well <coughs> oh man sorry um, on a map like Process, it is map dependent, by the way, um, as you might expect. On, on a map like Process, height is very important. Um, but there is a tried and true strategy um, that you know can blend the exact execution based on the map and so and so. But that's overcomplicating things. A tried and true strategy to follow on a mid fight is just bomb soldiers walk forward. Um, pretty much every mid fight has um, some strategy that follows this formula. Um, definitely, process does. Um, and of course, like there are multiple different ways to approach mids in every map, but. Bomb soldiers walk across is just a tried and true. Um, and something, if you if there was any mid strat to get good at, it would just be that. Um, you know, your soldiers are going to be buying that space, getting hopefully good damage on their bombs. Players look at them, and then the rest of you just kind of walk into them, blow them up, uh, clean up them, clean them up, things like that. Um, it's just a good, a good basic strategy to have in your pocket. <clears throat> I'm going to cap this midpoint so that, uh, the game continues here. Um, <clears throat> no matter what, there's usually gonna be a time that you can pick to commit your soldiers. And on most, most of the time you're going to want to, um, there is a caveat if if you lose a player and it's like disadvantageous for you all of a sudden then you might not want to just go like all out bomb into them walk into them um you might want to first look for a pick to 
to neutralize that disadvantage and then go for something like that. Because um, there are a lot of mid fights that kind of just end when one team kills a player. Um, the other team can't trade that player out. And then with like the one player advantage, the one team just like, they don't do anything crazy. They just take better and better positioning. And then the other team's like, okay, we're not really getting any, getting anything. Let's just leave. Um, anyway, that's already kind of overcomplicating things. If there's a mid plan to stick to as a newbie, like a complete beginner, um, Bomb both soldiers walk across is a pretty good one. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about sacking. So, I've been talking about it a lot. Um, what is sacking? Well, it's short for like a sacrifice. And the whole point is, if it's even ubers, if it's a, a stalemate, then the default strategy that almost everyone goes for is a sack. Um, a sack can look like many different things. Um, the most straightforward and basic of them is just a single sack in which you just send your roamer to die. Uh, pretty much, you just bomb your roamer in, he tries to kill their medic, or force his uber, or whatever. Anything to make that uber, that even uber stalemate, turn into add for your team. <laughs> That's what he's going to go for. Um, so, to make sacks more effective. Um, let's use process last as an example, right? So, process last is kind of difficult to push out of because defenders kind of have this natural high ground, right? Um, and they can have advantageous spam. So a common strat into process last is actually a double sack, where you sack your roamer and a flank scout. Um, so sending two people already a, a higher percentage play than just sending the one soldier. Um, and the reason you can get away with this is just because it's easier to defend, right? So you can be more comfortable going down two players here. Um, another thing that you should be doing on your sacks is pressuring. So if I know my soldier's about to sack into two, I obviously, as a demo, have to be careful about sticky traps, things like that, soldiers landing on me. But if I can get effective spam, even one 50 damage sticky on the medic means he's instantly already at risk of dropping to like one very good rocket so he's already going to be way more likely to use uber and all that was because i was deciding to pressure and get a little bit aggressive not enough to get caught here unless like a soldier lands on me i could potentially have like traps for that and then spam pipes whatever already too complicated but my goal is to first of all be completely safe and just try and spam them pressure them make them uncomfortable um so that the sack is more likely to work. And already, at lower levels, if teams are good at pressuring for their sacks, their sacks are going to be very, very good. Um, and you're going to get a lot of forces, a lot of drops, um, and just turn a lot of evens, even stalemates into uber ad. Um, so when the game gets to the level where it kind of slows down a bit, teams play more stalematey because like they realize um there's no reason to take a fight unless it's advantaged um it falls into this flow of sack counter sack so the flow would basically be my team has mid right my team technically has two but we're ignoring that um so it's kind of on us to sack first so we're going to pressure, send our sack in, do whatever we want. Maybe we're pressuring sewer um, for our sack. Holy random crit. Um, our guy dies. We're going to instantly want to be going into counter sack positioning. Where now that they have a player advantage, um, they're going to want to sack as well. So me as a demo, I'm locking out choke and potentially setting what's called counter sack traps for a soldier bombing through choke to try and kill him or something like that so he doesn't really get a good sack off or good counter sack off 
um, you know, we deal with their pressure, they get to send their sack, and now our guy is respawning, their guy died, and we can transition into our own sack. Uh, back and forth, ebb and flow, kind of like that. Um, and as far as, like, something to note, in a last situation, usually lobby, I, when I talked about, uh, when I talked about the callouts for process, I referred to, lo like, lobbies and, and generalities as this kind of, like, connecting neutral zone, which it completely is, because when we're pressuring for our sack, we're going to take control of lobby first um, to do that. But the second that our guy dies, we want to be out of lobby and back to point um, and playing our counter sack. Because if we're stuck in lobby during that, it's just a horrible position to be in. So <clears throat> there's a lot of like very neutral kind of territory that one team controls for the sack that another team then controls for the counter sack. Lobby is like a super, super great example of that. Um, I don't know what else to say i mean i think <coughs> at like a super beginner level sacking might not be um the most applicable strat um if you can get away with sacking absolutely do it but don't expect teams to sack into you i guess is what i'm saying um because you know as players get better as they learn like you know, all six people know what doors they're supposed to watch. A team trying to just walk in and dry into this point um, is going to wipe. It's going to be catastrophic for them. But at a beginner level, they might be able to get away with that and might not have been punished as much and might not know that there's, like, better strategies to go for. So um, just keep that in mind. But that being said, you know, if teams aren't very used to sacks, then just the most boilerplate basic, you know, you just pressure with spam, send a soldier to die, um, is going to be very effective. And definitely something that you want to be getting in the habit of, getting good at, and just getting in the that kind of flow, that, that sack, counter sack uh, flow of things. Um, it just helps to feel the pace of the game. Uh, it helps to know where to position, things like that. Anyway... Um, that's going to be that. What did we cover? We covered uber pushes, dry pushes, um, mid fights, and some sacks. So yeah, productive stuff today. Thank you all for watching.